Okay. Hi, everybody. I hope you guys can hear me okay. I um, was having a little bit of some technical difficulties and the weather is a bit crazy. Um, so I apologize. Um, I hope everyone's doing wonderful this evening. Uh, and I just want to welcome you all um, to our live panel discussion this evening. Um, which is um, all about uh, Black excellence and building community in education spaces. Um, my name is Ariel. I am a communications and operations associate here at Kansas City Teacher Residency in Kansas City, Missouri, for those of you that are not located in Kansas City. Um, and then tonight, I will also be having um, a, a tech person with me who also works for Kansas City Teacher Residency. She's also extremely amazing, and I'll have her introduce herself um, in a little bit. Uh, I do. Ariel. Wanna... Yeah. If you're talking, you're on mute. I'm on mute. <laughs> no, I can't hear you. We can't hear you. I was like, you're, you're good for here. Some can hear me. Ariel. I can hear you too. You're good. Okay, uh, <laughs> like, I'm on mute. No, <laughs> sorry, um, just me. My bad. Okay. <laughs> um. So yeah, I I'll have um my tech person introduce herself in a little bit. Um. Just a little bit about me though. I uh went to high school in Kansas City, some middle school as well, and then went to college at Missouri State. Um. But yeah, uh, that's basically me. I kind of moved around a little bit of a transplant and now I'm privileged and honored to be working at Kansas City Teacher Residency. Um, I do wanna give some housekeeping rules that as you come in, please remain on mute. We will have time for questions at the end. Um, and if you think you're gonna forget a question, feel free to drop it in the chat and we can always circle back to that question later on. Um, so Aisha, do you wanna introduce yourself? Sure. Um, I kind of already introduced myself. Um, sorry, y'all, I'm a little bit behind on the slides too. But I already introduced myself a little bit, but I'll just reintroduce for those that just joined. My name is Aisha Sims. I'm one of the continuum coaches on the team. Um, I've been with Casey Sierra for a little bit, a year and a half now. And yeah, I'll be uh, acting as tech support today, but my daytime job is recruit. <laughs> Thank you, Aisha. Um, so tonight, like I said, we're going to be talking about Black excellence and building community and education spaces. We have an awesome group for you all. Um, so yeah, I am going to go ahead and start to introduce them since I know we are running a little bit behind. Um, I do want to preface by saying that we did have a cancellation tonight, um, but we do have an awesome fill in for you all. Um, Cornell Ellis was not able to be with us. However, we do have Jorge Fuller. Um, so I'm going to start with him. Um, he will not have a, a slide up, but he is representing Block. And if you want to go ahead and introduce yourself. Well, good evening. Uh, I'm going to be Janine Johnson. No, <laughs> uh, my name is Jorge or George Fuller. It does not matter how you say it is how you spell it for me. Uh, I represent four or five different organizations at any given time. Uh, tonight, I get to represent Brock Block, which stands for Brothers Liberating Our Community as an advisor, as well as a member. Uh, they're currently having an event right now at the same time uh, dealing with Black males and mental health. Uh, so I get a chance to, you know, kind of separate a little bit. But I, in my day job, I am a recruiter for Kansas City Public Schools. In my other day job, I am the owner of Fuller for the People LLC, which stands on three pillars of educational prosperity, economic progress, and civic relationships. So this just ties in to everything that I do. Uh, and I don't know what else I was supposed to say. So that's, that's me. <laughs> that's perfect. Everything you said was great. Um, so thank you so much for joining us tonight. Janae, we're going we're gonna to turn over to you. Hi, I'm Janae Johnson. I am a continuum and instructional coach here with Kansas City Teacher Residency. I've been here about a little over six months. Um, prior to that, I was in the classroom for about two years. I have a specialty in culturally relevant teaching strategies and pedagogies. Um, I am a self-published author. I have done guest speakers and presentations at different conferences throughout Kansas City and for UMKC's Urban Education or School of Urban Education. So happy to be here. All right, Charles, on to you. 
Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, Charles King. I am the founder and CEO of the Kansas City Teacher Residency and have been in this work for six years with the organization and honored and privileged every day to be working with such an amazing team. Um, I've been in education. This is my 19th year in education. Uh, classroom teacher, uh, social studies teacher uh, for middle school, middle school principal in a charter school network, and then have been up here. So excited just to be in this space. Thank you, Charles. And we have Mr. Mark Simmons. You want to go ahead and introduce yourself? Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Mark Simmons. Uh, so great to meet so many uh, awesome professionals in the field. I don't really know how to top any of the things that you all said. Uh, I'm just a regular principal, but uh, I'm a principal of an alternative school here in uh, Springfield. This is my 13th year in education. Um, I have experience in um, both behavior, um, more specifically in autism spectrum disorders, special education teacher by heart, um and uh i've just played very many various roles um within the district that i currently serve in the area that's all you need right yeah that's all i needed thank you <laughs> um and then next uh we will have shakira uh good evening my name is shakira harris i have been in education for over 10 years um, I recently uh, wrote and self-published my first children's book. Uh, let's see, I have a bachelor's in child and family studies from Northwest Missouri State University. Uh, I went on and uh, went through KCTR cohort three. Woo -woo. Um, <laughs> and uh, let's see, went on to earn my master's through Park University. And now I am currently teaching at Brookside Charter as a third grade teacher. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, well, thank you guys all for introducing. Welcome again. Um, like I said, we're going to be celebrating Black excellence, uh, which is something that I know I'm really passionate about. Um, I think it's really important to know that Black excellence doesn't always just have to be something um, that that is historical based. Um, Black excellence can also be something um, that is focused as well as current our current change makers um, in addition to that. So uh, thank you all for joining us, like I said, and we're gonna go ahead and get started. Throughout, you may hear people jump on, that is okay. Um, and for anyone that came on, just remember to please make sure that you are muted and we'll have time for questions um, in a little bit. Uh, and then, yeah. Um, all right, so just to begin, I'm gonna go ahead and start. Um, and so my first question to everyone, we're going to start off with Black excellence in education. Um, and so for the ladies specifically, um, so that'll be Shakira and Janae. Um, and I am going to ask you both a question um, centered around your identity. And so as, as Black folks and our Black identity, it really impacts our journey on how we get to our spaces in education. And so my question to you all is, is how has your Black identity and you being a woman as well impacted your journey in the field of education? Good question. Whoever wants to start off first. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I'll take it. Um, for me, it was defining. Um, entering in urban education, it was, oh, you know, you're the black woman, so you can kind of help with the discipline and kind of wrangle the black kids and kind of get them together. And at first I was offended by that, but as I leaned into it, it helped me to define like my strengths, my expertise. It helped me to understand how important SEL was, building relationships with students, getting them to trust me. And um, it ended up really just defining, helping me define who I was as an educator. Like, yeah, I can get I can lean into that space I can build relationships with my students I can help with their behavior I can relate to them on a level that maybe other people cannot and so um for me it 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 was it was perspective it helped me put things into perspective awesome awesome and Shakira um I definitely agree Janae um I feel like you know 
it was more being in that urban setting, you know, you feel comfortable, like this is where I belong, you know, and you're, uh, you can relate to not just students, but families and people in the community that you're serving in. Um, but for me, I never really um, had any issues up until I had worked at a school, it was a charter school, and um, one of the one of my colleagues was complaining about the pay and we were a pair of professionals at the time. And she was like, Oh, like, you know, this is stupid. Like this little check, like, I wish I had more, you know, I have a bachelor's degree in which I did too as well. And she complained about it for months. And I was like, girl, let me see like what it really looked like. And she, uh, she was white. Um, set, we, we were the same age, literally had the same exact degree. Um, child and family studies and a minor in psychology and her check like she we compared our check stuff and she was getting two thousand dollars more than me I had more experience in education um, we had the same exact degree but she had get uh, she was getting two thousand dollars more and so um I was like, oh, and that's weird. But she was type like, oh, let's go to HR and talk to them about it. And so we did. We went to HR and we were just like, um, well, I was like, you know, just, I just don't understand how I have the same exact degree as this person. And I actually on my resume, you can see that my experience versus my colleague. And he was like, oh, well, you know, you guys shouldn't be talking about your salary and things like that. You know, um, this is confidential information. And yes, I understand. But at the same time, like, why is there a um, significance like in pay? You know, like, why is my pay lower than my colleague who's literally, we literally have the same role? And so that's when, like, the first time I actually saw like my Black identity um, affecting this space of education. Wow. Thank you. Thank, the, thank you to the both of you. Um, Janae, did you have a follow-up? I thought I saw you come off of mute. Okay. <laughs> well, and then to with that, we're for, for my men that are on the call, um, so Mark, Charles, and Jorge, um, for, for you all specifically within your identity, you, you all are black males, you all are men as well. And we know that males are drastically underrepresented within the education space. Um, I'm wondering if you all can share a little bit more about your journey and what led you to come to this field, to stay in this field that historically is white dominated and female dominated. And whoever wants to go first, don't be shy. I'm trying to unmute. Um, I can answer the question. Um, let me reread it. Thank you for putting it in the chat, Aisha. It was a loaded question. <laughs> um, my my journey into the field of education um, has been, it, you know, it's a, it's a pretty um, dry story. But uh, when I was in high school, one of my best friends, he had a twin um, who was autistic. Um, and, uh, I just saw him struggle a lot in school. So during my senior year in high school, um, I had four free blocks open, um, nothing to do with my time. I didn't really feel like working. And so I signed up to be a TA, um, and in that classroom, um, was my best friend. And what I noticed, um, at that time in high school was that in a class of seven, in a class of 17, nine of the students in there were black males who I knew went to the resource room, but I didn't know what the resource room meant until I became a special educator, you know? Um, and, and these gentlemen were, you know, they were four and five grade levels behind. They didn't participate in algebra one, you know, calculus and trig like the rest of us. Um, and, and I noticed they stayed in those classrooms all four years of high school. Um, not, only, not only did I notice that, they were also, um, for the students in there were frequent flyers, um, always getting suspended. And so what, what led me to kind of look into education further, um, as I transitioned to Missouri state was, you know, I wanted to make a difference. Um, I knew that I had to work, um, with our at risk and high need students, um, with mild and moderate disabilities. And so, um, 
you know, I don't, that's just where I saw, that's where my passion came from. Um, and what solidified that even more um, most recently was um, when I was completing my specialist in education, um, one of the districts that I um, was reviewing, they were found significantly disproportionate and they were disproportionate for identifying um, black students with um, uh, IEPs and as well as for having really high suspension rates. And so I know that not just me and myself is the only person that students need to see, but representation matters. Um, and so for me, it was a no brainer um, for me to, you know, continue my education. This is definitely a job that is overworked and underpaid, but the, um, the success that you see with that, with the students, you know, that that's unmatched. So I would answer the question. <laughs> no, 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 it definitely did. Um, Charles and Jorge, did you guys want to follow up with that? I think that what Mark said is awesome, um, but I would love to hear from both of you as well. I'm happy to jump in uh, and talk about it. So my, I, my experience or entry into the profession came through Teach for America. That was after um, I finished my degree at Morehouse and I think, you know, why I stay in the profession is, you know, thinking back to my experience. So growing up in Connecticut, I didn't have very many black male educators. And it wasn't until I went to school to college and, you know, all had a lot of professors who were black men and saw the and, and think about the impact they had on me. It's one of those like pay it forward moments that I have. And, um, you know, what has like kept me like kept me engaged and doing this work has been not only like thinking about you know my work in the classroom and kids seeing me as a teacher in the classroom and especially for my black boys and and having someone in the school to come to and to to just interact with and and to and really be like that role model of like how do you know what are options that are out there? And, and so, you know, and, and it's one of those things like I never thought I would know what the impact was, uh, but I think like the most like endearing things like the, you know, that would come about were, you know, kids who never heard of, you know, never heard of Morehouse prior to meeting me, who would then apply to go to Morehouse and, and eventually go to the, and matriculate to the, to the institution. Like that was like, you know, you know, a little bit of just like, wow, um, you know, that, that one moment, uh, meant a lot. And, and now just think about, you know, not only just those moments, but my own kids and other kids that, you know, I walk in the building and, and see, and see kids running, you know, kids in the building and, and see, and just like, a, and knowing that there's other black men just in education, whether I'm, whether I'm in a classroom or not in a classroom, but around is, is still equally important. Awesome. Awesome. Um, well, thank you, Charles. Um, Jorge, did you want to add anything additional to that? I guess I, I just wanted to take in everybody else's before I responded. <laughs> um, for one, there, there are things that have been mentioned, you know, the pay disparity and gaps, understanding re your representation that matters, and, and then continuing to inspire others to go into it. Um, I, I, don't necessarily remember the moment that I decided that I was going to be an educator, but I remember the moment that I was already in education. Um, I came out of high school and I knew that my experience was not to the par that I wanted it to be. I had a lot of outside external supports that allowed me to get a greater education than what I was getting provided in my internal or into my primary schooling. Um, I was coming out of a school system that did not have accreditation, that always got stumped on, that continuously pushed and pressed everything. And it, it was never anything good to hear this. And then when I entered college, I was entered as academic probation, even though I had college credits, even though I had GPA before, you know, don't let them lie. You don't start off at a 4.0, oh, you start off at zero. And so I, even though I had a 3.4 GPA starting off, I still was on probation. Um, but I started, I had forced, I was forced to do, <laughs> somebody said, yeah, you're right. Uh, I was forced to do Jumpstart Kansas City. I had no choice. Uh, my play mom was like, you're gonna do Jumpstart Kansas City. I got hired, it was my work study. And I remember working with a student called, his name was Rudy Amaya. 
And I, my whole objective was to teach him how to read. And so after that year, I ended up switching my major because I started off as business and finance and free law and then went over to like, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and go into education. And that's what it sparked me was working with that student that said, you know, I wanted to make sure that he had the opportunity. Uh, this little Mexican kid in the same school district that I was in, that I came out of, uh, that was getting prepared by me, uh, being able to not only him have an impact, but I was able to impact his whole classroom because I was spending a lot of my time that I had uh, for work study because I, I didn't like to be broke, so he was going to work. Uh, so I was spending a lot of my time earning in his classroom, so it was a lot of uh, space there. What keeps me in the industry, I guess that's a part of this. I want to make sure I'm right, so I'm reading over. Uh, but what keeps me in this, this dominated space that's white female-led or white female dominant is because if I leave, who's going to replace me? Right. The system is already designed to not do for our students or just designed not to do for kids that look like me. Then you have people that have no cultural understanding leading it and no ability to connect and build true, authentic relationships because they don't know the area that they're teaching in. If you don't want to live in the community that you teach in, then you're doing yourself a disservice because if you live there, you would know what baggage that they're coming in with. So me knowing that I'm from the community, I stay in it, um, even to my own detriment because the, the pay gap is real the salary changes is real you know it's like there's no way someone with a master's degree or below or above should not be making less than six figures but here we are so you know other industries are coming out with six uh, i guess that's my statement and i hope that answer you know continue with it no 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 that's great that's great thank you to all of you for that um, like I said, we're, we really were focusing on that identity, and I think it's great to hear from where all of your perspectives are coming from. Um, I have a, another question that I'm going to tag on to there, and, and maybe not everyone has to answer. If you would like to, that's great. But I would like to kind of shift and, and talk a little bit about defining success. Um, we know, like you guys have said, education isn't the highest paying sector. Um, several of us have discussed this, right? And in, within finding our identity, um, but there is still an excellence. I know for me, I have tons of friends that are in the education world that I would consider to be extremely successful and success is defined so differently amongst everybody. Um, so I would love to hear from you all with how you all define success for yourself in this field. Um, so the question, I'll restate it just in case I, I kind of elaborated too much, but how do you define success for yourself um, within the education field? And I don't want to call on anybody, so whoever's not shy, I want you to jump in. I guess I'll go first this time, since I'm still really off the other one. Um, and I actually kind of wrote something out. When I'm looking at defining success, it's not about what I've done in the classroom. It is about what that student can do in the real world. Um, and I was privileged to work with students in both elementary through high school. So I've gotten to get actually freshmen in college as well. So I've gotten to get a chance to actually see the product of my work, right? The, the end result in seeing a student that was my, or having a student and then their parent walk in and that was my student. And I'm like, yo, am I that old? <laughs> like, I got the question. Like, I'm like, eh, these gray hairs are for a reason, I guess. But being able to see that and know that I still have that same relationship with the student, they know that the parent knew that I was going to be honest, blunt, and upfront, and I was going to be truly caring. And so I was able to communicate differently with that student. I was able to do things differently with their student because I had that interaction previously. Then also that, that moment when you have that student that calls you back, and you have never called them, you answer like you're a bill collector, like, hello. And it's like, no, it, it, this is 10 years later. He's like, I just want you to know what you said, Mr. Fuller, was right. You was teaching us the real world. And I'm like, I don't even remember what I said 10 years ago. I don't remember 10 minutes ago. So we going to go ahead and continue with this. But I knew something stuck. And that's how you define success because those people, those students, that you'll see their transition from childhood to adulthood. And when they make it, you know that you've done what you were supposed to do as an educator. Wow, that's powerful, definitely. Um, I'm gonna say, I didn't know that you were that old. To So 
kudos to you. Um, anybody else? What? How, how do you define that success um, for yourself? Mark, it looked like you was about to jump in. <laughs> if you're gonna jump, nah, in, you know, <laughs> hey, nah, you know how we laugh with, with our whole body with a little rock, you know. I was laughing. Since you're was already laughing. off mute. You might as well go ahead. <laughs> but since you got me off mute, I mean, I'm just kidding. Um, you know, success for me, like I said, I work in the alternative setting. Um, that's that's where that's that's where my heart is. You know, I was one of those kids, you know, who grew up in foster care. Um, didn't have the best hand dealt, you know, I have a great father, um, who came back in my life later. So I don't want to downplay, you know, my experiences, but even my educational experiences have just been different. Um, for whatever reason, people have just kind of saw something in me, um, you know, and, and that has always pushed me to educate other students who have been in my position um, to be the same. You know, one of my mottos um, that we use at my school um, is to just be present and being present, you know, means that you're present in the classroom, you're present outside of the classroom, you're a representation of how, you know, we manage our school, you know, in our, in our community. Um, you know, uh, success to me is not what I've done personally, it's it's what my staff has done. Um, and like George said, you know, or Jorge, you know, whatever. Um, it's like what, you know, it's it's what we see after those students are gone. You know, that's what that's what success is for me. Um, you know, the the rates of our um, students who are not only in poverty, but just our students who are wards of the state, you know, the graduation rates are are very low. You know, um, so again, like George said, you know, having students come back years later and saying, man, I don't know what it is that you told me, but you just being there, um, you know, not holding me accountable, you know, hold, I mean, holding me accountable and, and making sure I did everything I was supposed to do helped to me to be where I'm at, you know. Um, so that's really what pushes. That's how, you know, that's what really is success defined for me is, you know, the work that we do is shown in the next generation of coming up so i'll just go ahead and piggyback um so success for me in the classroom uh different roles so in the classroom success for me was when my students would demonstrate their own genius that was my motto demonstrate your genius and when they could demonstrate their genius and they had that aha moment of like they got it they understand what i'm talking about um that they could produce their own thoughts and that they knew that they were thinking critically that was everything for me to see them do that and that built their confidence um success for me also looks like being in my community um my husband and I have been very intentional. We live, work, and worship in the community. So I live with my, you know, where my students live. Um, I see them out and about. They know my kids. They see my kids, like my children that I birth. So um, seeing them out and them speaking to me and us having conversations is being impactful to me. That lets me know that there is success, building relationships with those families. And then I think my third level of success is my own personal community. Like, do I have elevators around me? Like in my education circle, like are my people elevators? Like, do they help me? Do they challenge me where I need to be challenged? Do they push me to grow? Do they call me out when I need to be called out? And, and now that I'm a coach, I look at it the same way. Like, am I an elevator, right? Am I pushing the people that I'm coaching to be great, to demonstrate their genius the same way that I wanted my students to do it, um, to own and hone in on their skills in the classroom. Um, and as far as like monetary success, I'm not gonna lie. It gets a little hard like you make no money in education, bro. Like it's real. And having all these side hustles can be a lot, especially like if you got a family. And so that's something I've been thinking about and weighing on my own mind. Like, do I want to continue to have these side hustles? Like, what does it look like um, for me to, to sustain myself and my family and have longevity? Because, you know, as you build legacy, it also costs money to build legacy, right? Because the things that I want to leave and impact my, my children, like I'm building legacy in my community, but like my children have to become a priority as they're getting older too. And community work is great. And I want them to have that mindset, but also building legacy does take, it takes coins. Awesome. Uh, Charles? <laughs> this one was actually this was a hard this was a hard one for me um 
you know, what's been said around like students, I, I as Jorge and Mark were talking, I was um, recalling my my kids and right now that I'm so like I'm so old, like my kids be trying to uh, connect with me on LinkedIn and and like they they have all these like big time professional jobs and everything. And so like it, it's it's one of those like like proud moments of like, wow, there's like seeing what they've done. And, and like, that has, um, like, that's, I think I call like, that is how, you know, like you have been successful in education, right? Like it's, it's all about in service of others and seeing kids, kids grow up and and be just like good, productive adults and humans. Um, And while like those LinkedIn moments matter, like I, I was sitting in a parking lot one day um in in houston and one of my former like one of my students from my first class could not recall her face like stopped me in the middle of a parking lot i was waiting for my wife to come out and said hey mr king how are you doing she's like it's good to see you it's been a, it's been a long i'm like i don't even recall i can't even recall i can't remember first year teaching that was like i'm just like i just put that in the file in the back and like not nah, that's that's done never come back to that but it's like those are the moments that matter, right? And uh, and now, in the like, and now in the space, like the role that I play, I understand the privilege that I have, right, and the responsibility. And so for me, I think constantly about someone, you know, someone paved this way for me. So how do I pave this way for others and open up doors for others, right? And, and like that's. Um, I see like the responsibility I have now is like, how do like I get people on my team to be even greater, go further than where, where I am. And, and that is, that's like, like, that's the success. Like that's where I know I've done, like I've done right is by what others have accomplished and how to make sure like others are achieving their dreams and goals and, and, and how can I play a role in just making it happen awesome awesome anybody else want to jump in on this one before i move us on we have a question did you want to did you want to jump in i want to jump jump in in. i'm a spectator today (laughs) go ahead go ahead did you want to play out here in kansas city so i'm feeling right at home um but anyway when you're talking about success um when i saw Mark Simmons was going to be on your panel tonight. I wanted to what I wanted to watch, you know, and see what you're all talking about it. And and um, I knew Mark a few years ago at Missouri State. And when I think about where he is now and the work that he does, the hard work that he does that a lot of people don't want to do, I am just so proud of Mark and everybody in our office was always so proud of Mark. We knew he was special and we knew he had a gift. And, um, you know, he, we knew that he was, you know, had going through special ed was one of the harder programs too. But when I, yeah, and the hours and all the uh, extra work that you have to do. And, but anyway, my success as an advisor at Missouri State is seen you know, where he is now and the work that he does. And just that tiny bit of effort, you know, as an advisor to really love on your students like you would your own child. And then to know the amazing amount of goodwill that has been done after that. um, It's just kind of blows my mind, but I'm, we're, you know, that's, that's how we approached our students when we were at Missouri State. And just a quick side note, my dad was an educator and he taught for almost 40 years. It was about 38 years in a small, small school in North Missouri. And when you guys talk about, um, you know, the pay, the work that you have to do, I mean, he opened up the building every day. He closed it usually at 10 o'clock at night if there was anything going on and there mostly was. He was principal, he was a teacher, he was a bus driver, he was a coach. And I got to see that. I went, as soon as I was big enough to go, I was in the school building, you know, and all four of us were. But the joy and the privilege of being a teacher's child 
has been so amazing. I felt like that that joy and that special gift that I'd been given helped me in approaching my job as an advisor at Missouri State. And now I look at Mark and I see the work that he's done and the important special things that are happening in a, at Springfield Public School because of him. So it just pays forward. I mean, I know sometimes it's a hard pill to swallow because I, I can promise you my dad never made 20,000 a year, even after working 40, almost 40 years. And, and uh, but it was, it was like priceless, it's priceless. So if that helps get you through. No, thank you. Us. Thank you. Thank you. Um, well, thank you. I know that you all have already kind of mentioned uh, defining success. I want to kind of move us into community. And some of you have already kind of talked about your experience with, with being an educator from your first year to now. I'm telling you, y'all do not look that old, but I'm hearing you. Um, and so uh, I, I kind of want to go take us into the community now. Um, and specifically to start off, um, I would love to kind of know um, from Mark, since we we're going to segue into you, uh, can, can you speak to the process of building a community within your education, specifically with other Black educators? Um, and I know for you, you're, you are in Springfield, which historically is not an area that has a lot of Black educators. So I would love to hear from you on, on how that's been. Uh, to be honest with you, it's rough. You know, um, some of my closest friends aren't um, in the same position as I'm in, um, but we all recognize that we're in, you know, one of the largest districts <laughs> in Missouri, um, and we can pinpoint each other out, you know, no matter what type of audience we're in front of, we know the four of us are going to be, <laughs> you know, and it's one of those like, ah, I see you, I see you. So, um, you know, um, Building that community, though, is just being able to recognize, you know, the strengths that everyone has, you know, and encourage them to move in a way as well. Um, you know, like I said, um, our, my district now has done a, a, a better job at um, acknowledging the 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 vast um, equity and diverse um, issues we have. Um, you know, uh, most recently we've we just got our first um, black female um, superintendent for our district. And so that's been like a big, crazy buzz, um, you know, and, and it's been it's been hard for her, you know what I'm saying? So anytime I see her, I, I always have to say, I know you're my boss ultimately, but girl, let me give you a little elbow, you know what I'm saying? You know, um, you know, just because that's, you know, that's how you build that community and you really have to reach out to others, you know, and, and encourage each other, even if, you know, she is from Houston, Charles, um, even if you know that you're not in the same um, position, you know, because sometimes you never know who's watching, you know, um, some of my closest friends decided to move into teaching um, when they were in the classroom watching me work with students, um, you know, and move forward, you know, uh, my best friend is on the call, we talk about it all the time, you know, and she always gives me praises for encouraging her to go out and teach, but um, it, it, it's natural, you know, we're, we're natural nurturers. Um, and so even if we're misunderstood in those spaces that uh, people don't uh, necessarily want to see us, we know we all always have each other's back no matter what. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you. Um, I geared that question specifically to Mark because he is not in Kansas City. Um, I know that Kansas City, we still need Black teachers, of course, um, but I really wanted to kind of hear from him. A couple of us on the call did go to Missouri State. We have all been to Springfield before, more than a couple of us on the call, <laughs> but I will say that Springfield was, was a tough environment. Um, I would love to hear from now um, Jorge and Charles on how your community um, and support system has evolved over the years. Um, Charles, you with KCTR, you've already told us about your first year teaching. I know that you you came to Kansas City from Texas. Um, and Jorge, I would love to hear about you. You gave me a variety of things and I want to know all about them. And I want to know how that community has, has grown. So how has your community and support system evolved um, within this Black space within education?
Oh, I'll go first. Uh, and I'll say this, it's really about being intentional um, and building those connections. Uh, I've worked in two different school buildings, actually four, if you want to get technical as a as I go back, but two directly where I was there for more than one year. And I was intentional to go get to know, especially all of my Black teachers. And I was like, hey, half the time we hug out inside the building because we were there majority of our lifetime, we were at a school building together, at least for that period. So taking the moments to go and say, hey, what's going on? How you doing? Oh, you need help with something. Let me sit down. Let me do your observation. Let me go and support this. Um, and then let's have lunch because that lunch is key. Like y'all take the dang lunch break. Stop answering the emails. No more meetings on your lunch. Don't, don't grade nothing. Don't call nobody because you're not going to get that lunch time back. You're not getting it back. So go eat. <laughs> Enjoy it for the 20 minutes that you have. All right. And so Getting that chance to build that, it allows you to build the relationship, but it also allows you to build that retention piece because when somebody's struggling, they're struggling. And when you get a chance to talk to somebody at lunch behind them closed doors and let everything out, you feel better. You you get that cathartic release and then you go back and get to work because, you know, I ain't letting you go. Somebody's going to tell you, you ain't going nowhere. We're going to make it through this year together. And you do. Um my my evolution has gone through, it's weird because I had to do a fellowship uh, and I am the second cohort of the fellowship that Charles got to be the inaugural person. And not only that, I was able to be like, all right, cool, Charles, that's my big brother right there. Like I was able to call him like, hey, what's, what's going on? Like you get to build a family of people that are in, that are leaders, leaders for you. Uh, when I was finishing my master's in educational leadership K through 12 through Northwest, I knew when I walked across the stage, I was happy to see six other black people walking across the stage. But I was like, yo, it's really a lot of milk up here. And I'm truly a fly in the buttermilk. And I wasn't ready for that. But I did, I wasn't ready. And so here we are actually getting that experience. It wasn't uncommon because I went to U of KC. So I wasn't, it wasn't new. But it was also saying, okay, I know as a leader, I have to build my authenticity. I have to be transparent when I'm frustrated. But I also have to advocate not only for myself and that's what you're doing when you're doing all that you're building your community my play mom is my level four level five leader um and she was the one that I called when I said hey I'm switching my major to education and she said come here and literally gave me the longest most sincere hug I've ever had in my life um and this is somebody that's not your mother but this was my play like this is my play mom she's taught me for 10 plus years. I still can call her right now. She's going to drop anything that I ask and help me. And that's just the evolution of it. Some people stick with you for a lifetime. Some people is partial chapters, but you continue to evolve and see those skills and those personalities that you connect with. And I get to say like my sister over here, if you think I would go call her out, like that's my sis. I was like, yo, I was there. You got in. Now I see you. I was like, I get to share your social media posts where you're highlighting. I get to be like, yo, you got the only one I know over there. And I have family in the program. So I'm like, this is my people because I get to see your growth and I get to celebrate it with you because I know the things that you showed before was completely amazing. And the things that you continue to do, I don't even have to guess. If I can recruit you over to where we are, you know I would. <laughs> well, thank you, thank you. Um, Charles, if you wanna jump in for just a little bit, I know we're running a little bit behind um, and I have a few more questions I like to ask you guys, but Charles, if you wanna jump. Yeah. I'll keep it 30 seconds outside of Jorge. We're just going to make a book of taglines. I'm taking like all these notes, every these one liners, these are all these zingers, right? You come, you, I'm like, you, you come in with, you come in with it. Um, the only thing I would add is, um, you know, in come moving to Kansas city, it was hard to build new community. Cause I had been in Houston for 13 years when I moved here. It's also interesting. Like Jorge spoke to, um, the fellowship, he didn't name drop the fellowship. So Surge, uh, which is a leadership program devoted to for uh, educators of color, launched a cohort here um, a few years ago. And, and that is how, like, I think like, that was my first time getting connected with folks locally, other leader educators of color, 
who are leaders in the in the space all collectively working together. And what else to say, like being in the role that I'm in, like there's a lot of national connections. So I would say I've I've brought in my community and have learned to really just like step out of my like step get out of my way and take a risk in getting engaged and network with uh, others across the country and brought in a network because you never know when you need to make that phone call for the next step in the next role. And so that's, uh, that is something that's important. Awesome. Awesome. Um, I, I too was a fly in the, in the buttermilk. I don't, <laughs> just so you know, um, but I, I, I just, so I just have another question for you guys. I want to keep on that community. I'm going to keep it short though. Um, but what is one piece of advice that you would give someone who is starting out in education? Um, just one piece, something sweet. And like that one thing that if, if someone came to you and you only had 10 seconds to convince them, what would be that one thing you'd give them? Don't judge it by your first year. That's a good one. Uh, I would say uh, if, if you're serious about the profession, become a para. Get in the classroom, get some experience first. So that way, you know, if, if classroom management is, is or is not your thing. <laughs> Shakira, did you want to say anything? Anybody else? Sure. Give yourself grace. That's a plug, y'all. That's a plug. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Well, I'm going to move us to our rapid fire section. Um, I only need one answer. So we're going to play this game of rapid fire. Um, I'm going to get one answer from all of you, but they're going to be quick. So that way we can allow for some questions. So I'm going to start off. Janae, I'm coming to you first. Who is one person that has impacted you in the education world? Name. Jimmy Adak. Ooh. Popcorn Jorge. Dr. Tony, Dr. Tony Jean Dickerson. Come on, y'all just pop off a mute. I would say a new person, um, Akbar Cook. Hmm. Nice. James Baldwin. Mm. Shakira. My third grade teacher, Miss Allen. Awesome, awesome. Okay, next question I got is, did I forget anybody? I don't think I forgot anybody. Okay, my next question is, what is your go-to lunch that you take to school? You gotta have it. You bring your lunch to school. What is that go-to lunch? No lunch, so I can lay the building. <laughs> and that's real. <laughs> Reclaiming your time, I see. Um, <laughs> uh, for me, I'm always having a PB&J. It's going to always be. That's one thing from my childhood. I refuse to give up. Bologna, gone. But PB&J, yeah, I'm going to have that. <laughs> yes, I would like to agree. Peanut butter and jelly. And I need to maximize my time. I don't have to go wait in line to warm up, use the microwave. Just going to go ahead, whip it out, eat it up. Yeah. By wallet. Cause if I don't have that, we ain't eating today. Cause I ain't got none from leftovers. <laughs> Charles, sandwich and chips. Sandwich and chips. All right, all right. So my next question is, you know, we're feeling the groove. You about to get out? You getting out your car? You got that song on? You pulling into the parking lot? That song that gets you amped up? What is that song that you play? When you were walking up to the school, you got your headphones on. I can tell y'all, I, I don't have one yet, but I'm not a teacher. But when I walk up to KCTR, I feel pretty good. So what is that one song that y'all got? I need got some it. more context before you say songs, because you don't know. It's, <laughs> it, it's a song for the type of day that you, you have. So I need to know, is this supposed to be a good day? Is this a day that I survived? Or is this a day where I kind of just need to be hyped because I didn't know if I was going to make it? We're going to say this is the majority of your days, and we want you to be your authentic self. So what would you authentically, with your wallet in your pocket, walk in with? When you going to school, you got your wallet. You like, dang, I know I'm gonna give me some lunch today. What is that song? 
Hey, well, that's going to be F you pay me by Tech Nine, and it's going to be blasting out with the subwoofers too. So let's get real. <laughs> I feel that. Next person. Mine's is, I got to, I got to do too. Mine's is Element by K Dot and Come Get Me by Lecrae. I have to listen to them back to back. I got it. I got it. <laughs> oh, oh Someone God. in the chat said Tupac <laughs> all eyes on me. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> um for me and it's it's kind of funny because i'd never really act out any of these things i'm really a big teddy bear with my kids but uh i always listen to um boosie set it off like i don't know what it is it just gives me hype like hey don't get me started <laughs> <laughs> charles what is your song i would love to know charles's song since charles and i work in the same building I would love to know what Charles walks into. When I see him pull into the parking lot and I look to my left, I know what I'm listening to. I would love to know what Charles is <laughs> to. So I don't have like a, a song, but I do play a lot of Rick Ross. So it is Rick Ross and Jay-Z. <laughs> <Whoa>. <laughs> Everyone's like... <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Sorry, I was looking at Janae's reaction. <laughs> That was unexpected. I'm with you. I'm just trying to figure out how you started laughing without being unmuted, but it was still <laughs> muted. I need you to go ahead and let that out. <laughs> um, Shakira, you got your song? Yes, I'm with it uh, by Jordan Armstrong. Awesome, awesome. Um, well, thank you for that. I am going to download all those songs. If I don't already have it, I will let you know I do have Boosie on my playlist now that i think about it i might come to work with that one tomorrow hey, uh, you better have it on, your <laughs> on my playlist so the last rapid question i have is what is one thing you have to have in order to be productive for your day and jorge you cannot say your wallet again i'm, I'm gonna need that one thing that you gotta have in order to be productive I, you gotta come back to me because I gotta think. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's like, what do I need? What do I need? That's easy. Coffee. Coffee. Got to have the caffeine. Next person. For me, I would say I would have to have my alone time like in the morning before um going into the school, just like quiet time, just need to focus, get my mind right. Uh, meditate, pray, all of that, eat all of that. Awesome, awesome. I definitely think you need that. Um, I think kids need that. I do that with my daughter every morning before she gets out the car. I'm like, take a second, take a beat before you walk in that building. Be the best you that you can be. So yeah, next person. Don't be shy. I'm not a teacher, but I will call you out. <laughs> I, I think I just got to have like what my normal routine. You know, every school year is something different. Um, but like my anchors are my t my prayer time, time in the word. And I got to check in with my children before I leave the house or, you know, before I drop them off with school or whatever. So I got to know that they're set and that they're OK and everything is going, you know, their day is going to go as planned. Um, and then I can focus in on my job. Awesome. I feel that. Mark? Uh, I, I, I've been trying to think this whole time. I have like 15 <laughs> things in my head. Um, I would have to say probably it's a cross between getting enough sleep and um, getting a workout in the day before. I, I really relieve my stress. Um, you know, I don't look like it, but, you know, your boy lost over 100 pounds. You know what I'm saying? Going to celebrate that. But, uh, um, <laughs> but it, you know, it, it working out became kind of an obsession, but for good reasons. You know, um, I definitely get a lot of my stress out, you know, especially after working a tough day with kids. You know, that that one student of 30 in your class that that <clears throat> takes over your class and makes you send them to the office every day. I have 78 of them. Um, and they want to all be in my office every day. Um, and so, you know, really just getting that stress out. So, yeah, I would have to say probably a workout um, for sure. Awesome. All right. We saved the best for last because you couldn't go first. That's OK. 
Why so you did you say you back? I was like, he came, did you? <laughs> no, Charles said coffee. You're right. You're right. You're so right. Oh, you must have been shucks. really thinking. You must have been really thinking. I really am, because part of me is like, I don't even want it. Y'all done heard it. It goes off all the time. My phone. I I mean, that's the only way I would be productive. And I only got two of them. So I'm sitting here like, I don't want to be productive no more. <laughs> so yeah, my cell phone has got to be with me. If not, it's the second close runner up is definitely sleep. If I don't have enough sleep, I don't even like. I'm not coming in. It's I just called out self care day because I'm going back to sleep. <laughs> oh wait, I'm not muted. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but you know what I'm talking about because if you don't get that sleep, that patience is gone. Like I don't have enough as it is, and then you want me to come in and be patient, and you got. You got 78. I had seven that felt like 78, and they were too small to him up against the wall. So we was definitely going to the gym pumping iron every night. So that sleep was definitely needed. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Thank you guys for everybody. Um, those are all the rapid fire questions I have. Um, I don't know if anyone else has any questions that they want to either drop in the chat if you're shy or if you want to come off mute. This is your time. This is your moment. Maybe you agree with someone's song or maybe you resonated with something that someone said. So I'm going to give us a couple minutes, see if there's anything that anyone wanted to ask anyone on the panel. No questions, going once, going twice. Anybody coming off mute? I thought I saw somebody look like they were gonna come off mute, maybe not. <laughs> okay, there's that. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, I was like looking. I gotta um, build the whole playlist for you. All you gotta <laughs> do is go take this chat and go through. I promise you, you gonna make it through the day. But that Use Me by Bill Withers, I had to play that every day for about three months because I was the only admin uh, on a regular. And so I was dealing with students, staff, and parents, and I was done. I don't know how I made it through, but we, we made it. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you. I will be taking all of these songs if I don't already have them. Um, but yeah, I guess the only other question I have, is there anything that you can think um, is key for the audience um, for, yeah, for the audience or of, of current, like if there's current teachers out there, cause this is recorded or if there's potential teachers um, that, you know, that you would tell them, is there any last thing you have a platform it's recorded. If you had that one thing you wanted to say. Who, you know, gets you in the door, what, you know, keeps you there. So get to know somebody and then show them what you got. I like that. Anybody else? Your present will be your past, which will one day show up in your future. And that's good for yourself and for your students. You, you know, we want to skip over stuff and all that. Nope, what's going on right now, what you do with your students now is going to show up. So make it count. Well, awesome. Awesome. Um, well, I just want to say thank you guys for everybody that joined. Thank you to our awesome panel. Um, I am going to, like I said, have this recorded. I will be posting it on Kansas City Teacher Residency's YouTube page. And at that time, I will have all of um, the ways that you can contact the panelists, uh, their social media um, and their email address, maybe one of Jorge's phone numbers since he's got two phones. Um, so. I will have that for you all. Uh, and I just I just want to thank you guys for joining. I hope that this has been a, a welcoming, inviting experience for you all. My main goal was that I wanted it to feel like a warm hug from the Black educators that, that I know um, and that people that I know that are in the education field. We spent all of Black History Month focusing on um, our history. And sometimes our history can be filled with trauma. But Black excellence is here and Black excellence is now, and it doesn't have to be something that is trauma-filled. It's, it's successful, and we have a community. So thank you all so much for joining. Um, like I said, if you have any questions, 
please feel free um, to, to reach out to us on our website, which is kcteach.org. Um, we do also have positions open. If you head there, you can apply. This is a plug. Some of y'all, I know Jorge was trying to get Shakira, but Shakira, if you want to come to KCTR, you know, there's a position open. And for anyone else that is on the call, there's a couple positions open. So we love to see it. Um, and thank y'all so much. Thank you for joining.